Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to House of Prayer Evangelistics Church Sunday School Hour, Christian Education Hour. And we're going to get prepared for the word on this morning, the lesson on this morning. We're going to start with our scripture, 2 Timothy 3, starting in verse 16. 16 through 17. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Amen. Amen. So as we begin to walk through scripture today and principles of what God desires for us, we pray that it will equip us and strengthen us and give us the tools that we need to do good works here on the earth realm. We are continuing this week in session five. It's called Break Time, discussing the importance of rest. So what we're going to do is we're going to journey over to page 26. Last week we were able to dig into some resources for the seed, which is the scripture, which is never changing. It holds its substance. It's a solid foundation for us to stand on. And so today we're just going to go into nurturing those seeds that were planted. Revisiting a few of those scriptures, expounding on them, interacting with one another so that we can grow together. We know that iron sharpens iron. There are things that you all are able to teach me and things that I'm able to teach you. And so just here in this space today, we're going to educate one another, share out with one another. So in nurturing the seed, we are learning that discipleship requires that we give attention to our bodies as temples of the living God. Run-down disciples have insufficient energy to do the work of the kingdom. Does everybody agree with that? If we're run down, we're insufficient for the kingdom to do the work. One of the things uh, that the title says is importance of rest. And so rest is usually something that we do last. Right? It's the last thing we think about. You have a few people that might just be lazy people and they rest all the time. <laughs> but most disciples, servants for Christ, they are up, they are going, they are doing, 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 doing. And it's rare that the thought to say, I should rest today, comes to mind. And not to rest in the form of selfishness, but resting in the form of, I want to be sufficient right. in the kingdom. Okay? Yes. We all know that when we don't sleep, we don't process information well. Sleep enhances our cognitive functioning. Sleep enhances our thinking processes. Everybody agree with that? When you're rested, you think well. You think better, okay? Our emotional clarity and balance. So sleep enhances our emotional clarity and balance. Agreed? I love when we're in agreement. Some advice that adults should not engage. Some advice that adults should not engage in serious conversation after 9 p.m. Why? I'm going to advise that too. Why? It's not great to do. Have you ever been on your way to sleep and your child comes and asks you something? You gave them a yes because you were oh. tired. You were ready for bed right. and. You don't really even know what you said. But then they come back and they do it. And you're like, who said for you? I asked you. I asked you when you was uh, going to bed. And you said, yeah. Now you, you heed it. Because <laughs> they got over. And they are aware that we are not at our best thinking process when we get to that place. And they know that that yes was from an exhausted day. And they take it, and they run with it, and they do what they want to do. Just like decisions for our uh, family, our finances, things like that, that might not be the best pillow talk to have. Yeah. You know? Maybe we need to be more cognizant. Maybe that should be a morning a.m. kind of conversation. Mm -hmm. 
Husbands might be agreeing to things to the wives that they had no intentions on agreeing to. They ready for bed bed, okay? So we want to make sure that we are being mindful of times when we're having those kind of serious conversations. Even in our employment, if you're working and your mind's not right, sometimes it's better to say, can I process that for a little while? Can I have some time to think and I'll come back to you? If you're exhausted, that's most are uh, in my uh, job, our heavy meeting days are Monday, Tuesday. So Monday, Tuesday, we spend a lot of time in meetings and on Zooms and different things. And so we hit in the beginning of the week heavy. And we're leaving Wednesday, Thursday, Friday to process all the things we set out for Monday, Tuesday. And so they, they're even trying to model that. Let's hit it in the beginning early so then your mind can process. Because they think because they gave you two days off to rest. You're coming back Monday ready and alert. But how many of us sometimes don't do that? guilty <laughs> okay but that's the desire right so you have two days to rest monday we're ready for you yes. but sometimes monday i'm not ready for you because <laughs> no. i didn't take my time to rest like i was supposed to okay so all of us are less healthy emotionally when tired we snap at loved ones and are unreasonably angry or sad guilty yes and those are the easy people to snap right you yeah. they get the raw unfiltered uncut versions of us yeah. okay also another thing i thought about when i read this sentence another way we snap is when we hungry right. so now you can be hangry and that's the reason that <laughs> you are acting the way you're acting because you need food but when is it that I just need rest too, right? And so we're able to, t I'm able to tell people when I'm hungry. We're able to tell people when we're hungry. But what about saying, I need some rest. I need some time to retreat and unwind and take that time. I need that time, okay? Sleep deficiency, sleep, defi sleep deficits can prove particularly damaging to those with mental illness. Season from work allows us a special time to worship God and reflect on his word. Isn't that awesome? Yes. So season from work allows us that special time to uh, worship and reflect on his word. And I will say, my job gives me two days off, Saturday and Sunday. I do not work. Amen. Sunday, I choose to worship and come here. Saturdays, I run like crazy. Sun up to sundown. Sun up to sundown. Sun up to sundown. Saturdays are filled with so many things. And it's like, what if I took moments of that time for God? Sundays are dedicated for that. And Sundays I rest. So I leave here from worshiping with you beautiful people. And I go to rest. <laughs> and I don't take on any other assignments or anything of that nature. It is my day of rest. And I love getting in my bed at 4 p.m. Yes. And if it's after that, I feel some kind of way sometimes. Because I've trained myself to do that. That's what I do. And I read, and I chill, and I nap, and I wake up, and I eat, and I go back to bed. And that's my Sunday. So I can be ready for work on Monday. Yes. But what if we decided that the time we had away from work, we carved in time? for worship and dedication unto God. Yes. We carve in time to rest. It's 24 hours in a Saturday, and I rarely rest. Like, I was running yesterday <laughs> like crazy, running and running. Even my car is like, please change your oil. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and it's one of, I saw it yesterday. This morning I pulled up to come in. It says it again. Please change your oil. Okay. <laughs> I should have found time yesterday to change my oil. <laughs> so now I gotta find time tomorrow <laughs> to change my oil. But it's things like that that you just keep going and you're going and you're going and you're going and you're going. And, you're going. and we do that to our temples. We they go, they go, they go, they go, they go. So 
So my job policy is 45 hours a week. Uh, on a regular church week, you all probably see me about 12 hours or so, maybe a week. And then my bed might see me 16 hours. And I don't know where the rest of the time goes. <laughs> and so I need to sit down and understand why, what am I doing with this time? Why am I exhausted half the time? And why am I not prioritizing rest? So we're going to go back to Exodus. So in Exodus 23, 10 and 11, that's where we're going to go to today. This blew my mind. Blew my mind. In six years thou shalt sow thy land, and shalt gather all the fruits thereof. But the seventh year thou shalt let it rest, and lie still, that the poor of thy people may eat, and what they leave, the beast of the field shall eat. In like manner, thou shalt deal with thy vineyard and with thy olive yard. Blew my mind. So in Exodus 23, 10 and 11, God gave the Israelites his law concerning Sabbath. He's consistent in this, too, because he told, he did it himself in Genesis when he did the creation. After the sixth day, yeah. on the seventh day, he rested. He gave the same instruction later to the Israelites. His law concerning Sabbaths. In fact, he called the Israelites to rest for an entire year, every seven years. So what did they do? They rested, and they let the poor come and eat from their fields. So they worked them fields six years straight, tilling, sowing, plucking, harvesting. Six years straight, you got this time to work. Work, 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 work. Seven year rest. And while they're resting from the field, the poor can come and get the scraps. And whatever the poor people, whatever the humans did not take, then the animals got to eat for an entire year, 12 months. I'm not saying this is what God's telling us to do, but I thought about it. How many of us can take a year off every six years? I cannot. And I even had to think, what does it require for me to prepare for such a season to be able to do? But not even take it off. But leave what I don't need for somebody else. And then what they don't need left for somebody else. Amen. And so I thought about how strategic God is, and he's really been dealing with me in this word strategic and strategy, and just seeing how he works and really, his, like his thoughts are going to And he's blowing my mind in this season. But the strategy it would take for us as humans to prepare for such a thing is to let go of some of the things that we believe are so profound and so necessary, right? So back in the day, I went back and I looked, these people weren't trying to build corporations. They weren't trying to pimp out or abuse another man's working power. They were just in survival mode. What it is that I need practically every day to live? Now we become materialistic. We become coveted, coveting other people's things. Right. We become greedy. That's where corporate America has come from. Each person had the desire to till and to work and to do well within their field. So if I only grew cucumbers or whatever, I knew I could go to Priya and she had the tomatoes. And then I could go to Clarence and he had the lettuce. And when I put it all together, I got a salad, right? But what now, I don't want to ask Tanya for her stuff. So I'm going to grow my own cucumbers and then I'm going to, I mean, my tomatoes, and I'm going to grow my own lettuce and all that too. And if they even want some of mine, I'm selling it to them. <laughs> I'm not watering. I'm not doing none of that. And so corporations begin to come in to where we don't even save now for just the needs. So financial advisors will say we should have six months worth of, um, overhead saved in your account. So if something was to happen to your secular job, you can survive for six months. Well, God gave the Israelites 
12 months. Hallelujah. Right? So sometimes, not saying we don't take these, these forms of advice, I'm not saying that, I'm not even saying we should take off a year, but could we do it if necessary? 12 months of no labor. It's a lot of chilling. <laughs> A lot of good times. Could we do it, right? And what would it require effectively for us to be able to do so? But then not just for us, for somebody else. So your harvest and what you stored up is enough for others to benefit from. All right? So we gave them an entire year every seven years. Today, we would call this time away from any work activity a sabbatical. Has anybody ever took a sabbatical? Yeah, when you don't work. When you rest in the Lord, yeah. You took a How long was your sabbatical? You know, I actually need to take one every day. <laughs> <laughs> we need to be replenished every single day. Seven days a week. Have you ever taken one, Sister Mary? A sabbatical where I didn't work for yes. a long period of time? Yes, ma'am. Well, well, I'm retired, so. Okay. <laughs> you're living, for you're me living your best life right now. Yeah, I mean. I'm going to be there, too. Before I, I'm not working outside the home, so I'm doing what I want to do. So I'm sabbatical all the time. <laughs> Those are goals for me. Goals for me. I definitely want to be on my sabbatical before 50. So in Exodus 23, 12, let's journey over there really quick. It says, six days thou shalt do thy work, and on the seventh day thou shalt rest. That thy ox and thy donkey may rest, and the son of thy handmaid and the stranger may be refreshed. Okay? So that's the same for us. So he's even telling them how to go about their week. And so God has given us time to work. Even instruction for rest comes from God. Instruction to work comes from God. And so let's take that to the kingdom. We honor Christ on Sunday here at House of Prayer. This is the time that we honor him. This is the time that we worship him, where we come together corporately, collectively, to esteem and worship the God that we serve. So as members of this house, when should we work? Monday through Saturday, because Sunday is our time. Understand that everybody cannot have that, right? But if it's up to you and your power and your desire to be unified with us, and it is something that you can ask for, I would say ask for it. Because some jobs will allow that, because that's the time we've decided, our leadership has decided, that we come together. God gave the Israelites the same thing, work for the six days on the seventh rest. Not only are you resting, your animals are resting. Yes. So give your uh, ox time off. They get a day of rest. Give your donkeys time off. Yes. They get a day of rest. Give your handmaids time off. So he even gave them instruction for those. So even when people came into this uh, corrupt mindset of slavery and all of those things, they stepped out of the will of God. And us individually have that opportunity, right? So I can simply, this is something I thought about by doing this lesson. I can simply just tell my child, he don't have to do chores on Sunday. That might start this month. I haven't done that yet. Because he does chores every day. He's our uh, automatic dishwasher. Right. And so maybe Sunday we'll do something different and then he doesn't have to. But God was considerate of every single creature, every single being, and desiring for us to have that time of rest. Yeah. So even for the handmaid, they got their day off. So the house was cool, you know, on the seventh day. And it's showing the importance of rest. It shows the consistency of God. It shows the character of God. It shows the heart of God. That he doesn't want us beat down and abused. He doesn't want us to do that to our own bodies. Okay? And he doesn't want us to do it to our children. So God called his people to rest one day out of the week. We see that everyone in our households today 
requires at least one or two days a week for rest, following five or six days of work. The rest allows us to remain obedient to the demand of God. To, I'm sorry. The rest allows us to remain obedient to and dependent on God. That's what rest does. So when we rest, we obey God. When we don't rest, we disobey God. And it's little things of that nature sometimes. We're looking for the big ten or we're looking for the things that we see as defiled in our eyesight with our natural eye. But what about the people that's not resting? What about Sister Portia who doesn't take uh, appropriate rest? And that moment she moved in a form of disobedience. It doesn't make it greater than the fornicator. It doesn't make it greater than the adulterer. It's disobedience to God. He's told me, Portia, take care of your temple. He has me reading, studying, doing these things. So therefore, I have to be obedient to that. And that's what rest does. Thank God that we have the protection of his commands to draw close to him and cease striving. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle. I'm so glad he's gentle. Yeah. And humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. Matthew 11, 29. That was one of our seeds resources for the seed. This sounds like common sense. Though we struggle with it, the body is incapable of getting good rest without having an adequate amount of sleep. Uh, and sleep requirements change as we age. I'm getting older. My sleep requirements change. I remember when I became a mom. I remember that day like no other. And when I became a mom, the only thing that Demarcus would do was sleep. I'm like, this is easy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was people talking about? <laughs> Having kids was rough. And he did that about four weeks straight. It was like every two hours, three hours, he wanted food. Got up. He didn't cry for the food. He just woke up. No, he was, his eyes was open. I fed him. He go right back to sleep. I'm like, hmm, this is cool. <laughs> So it was like four weeks. The fifth week came, and he up more. I'm like, why you up? <laughs> you ain't supposed to, you supposed to be asleep. And then as it got older and older, more movement, more activity, more demands. We got the walking and the talking, and it just changed, right? So now I have to be, I have to begin to train his sleep pattern because his body wasn't doing it naturally. Now he needed mama to say, it's not daytime, it's still nighttime. I need you to go back to sleep. Yeah. Oh, it's daytime now. I need you to wake up. You could be up for this time. And so our bodies change as we age, mm -hmm. you know? And some people, eight hours will be suffice. Normally, I run on four to five. Four to five hours. I'm asleep after midnight, most nights, and I'm up by 5 a.m. Every day, like clockwork, I'm getting up at five. If I end up staying up till two, which I dread, I'm still up at five. But the average sleep I get is about four to five hours a night of sleep, and that's what I run now. Am I gonna be able to continue to run on that sleep? Absolutely not, because my body's aging, and it's gonna want more sleep so I can be more adequate and more sufficient in the kingdom. All right, so our bodies change, which require us. Adults require, on average, eight hours of sleep. And sleep and rest are recommended to occur between the hours about midnight and 8 a.m. I wish I could sleep to 8 a.m., but I have to work by 8 a.m. Yeah. You know, so I can't. Now, I do get up at 5 a.m. for prayer. That's what I wake up for. So I could sleep to about 6, 30-ish, if I desire to. But then I feel like my mornings are rushed. And I don't like not being able to spend time at a place that I pay for. And so I like to have those two and a half hours in the morning before I go to work and then some time in the evening time because it was a, a season in my life. I just paid for a place to fall asleep for four hours and I never saw it. Never sat on my couch, never went in my kitchen, never did the things that I needed to do for the place that I was paying for. But to sleep till eight would be like awesome. Maybe I could start sleeping till eight on Saturdays instead of getting up and running around, okay? These hours conform to the body's 24-hour clock. 
Sleep experts also say that it is impossible to recover from sleep deficits. Did I hear that? They say it's impossible. I would say I'm operating under a sleep deficit. Five hours of sleep is not enough. Four hours of sleep is not enough. But sleep experts say it's impossible. But well, we know that God, with God, all things are possible. But they say it's impossible. By not getting sufficient sleep, not taking holidays to renew ourselves and overworking ourselves to achieve the American dream, that's what we talked about earlier. That's what corporate came in. That's when the times of the world changed. We trying to achieve the American dream. We have made some fundamental errors in self-care that have a permanent impact. Self-care now is not even rest, not even including in self-care. It's very rare that you're gonna hear somebody say they're taking self-care and the self-care is rest. Self-care now is a manicure, pedicure. Self-care now is wanna go buy yourself a new outfit, getting your hair done, hair cut. Self-care is one of hanging out with the girlfriends or, you know, that's what we, we're considering self-care now. Or a trip or a vacation, which is still more work, but it's self-care genuinely having that uh, time to rest and rejuvenate your body. Jesus and his followers practice restful retreats. We talked about this. So in Mark 6, 31 through 32, that's where they practice restful retreats. You go up and you rest. Let's journey over there really quick. Mark 6, 31 through 32. You got it, Sister Evelyn? Okay. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Lord. 31 through 32, Mark 6. And he said unto them, Come ye yourself apart into a desert place and rest a while. For there are many coming and going, and they had no leisure so much as to eat. And they departed into the desert place by ship privately. And the people saw them departing, and many knew him, and ran afoot thither out of all cities, and outwent them, and came together unto him. And right. just start right there. So, they had been working. Working so hard, they didn't even eat. It wasn't an intentional fast. It was... Uh, uh, kingdom mindset to where work was there. God was like, y'all been working so much, I ain't even eat. Let's take some time. Let's steal away. You have people coming and going, pulling on you, tugging on you. Let's take some time. Let's rest. And so that's what they did. Disciples. That's us. You are a disciple. That's us. We need rest for our life journey and our ministry to others. We're no good to one another when we're exhausted. That's how sometimes those little bitty imps come into the body because we're tired. So I can simply just ask one little question and Sister Clarissa snaps on me. It wasn't her intention, she's exhausted. She didn't recognize it within herself and so therefore now I need to make sure that I'm using that conflict resolution that God gave me and not taking offense to it. But her mere reason could be, sis, I was tired. Yeah. And I didn't think about my response before I responded. Right. But the enemy uses that. And so we need to be restful. We need to be rested even for one another. So we're not bringing that in there. It said earlier in the paragraph, our loved ones are the ones who we snap on. I know that my sister loves me. And so if she was to snap on me, I should be exploring that more than just taking offense and never talking to her again. Right. So I'll be like, sis, I don't know if you noticed, but when I asked you a question this morning, you snapped. Oh, I'm so tired, sis. I'm, I didn't even get enough sleep. Oh, okay. I just wanted to make sure we were good. And we move on. But he even uses the exhaustion of our bodies to bring that little stuff inside of here. 
amongst one another. We have to rest for our ministry. I need you rested. You need me rested. We need to be rested. Okay? So, it goes on to say in Exodus 34, 14, God told Moses, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. If you are tired, we can go to our God. If we are tired, we can go to our God and he will give us rest in himself and in our circumstances. How often do we do that? God has called all who are exhausted and burdened to come to him. He offers rest from both spiritual and physical burdens. He offers us rest from everything. Everything that we encounter, physical, spiritual, he offers that rest. Come unto me. And so that's the moment we got to go to our dad. And we say, and sometimes it's the things where we don't have the control. So you are in corporate America. And corporate America is pulling you left and right. Corporate America wants every ounce of your time. They got mandatory overtime. They going to fire you or terminate you when you don't do what they want to say. You don't have control over that. It's a higher power in that place that's controlling you. You go to your day and you say, this is the job I'm at right now. And I'm tired. I have no more to give this place. I need you to give me some rest, Lord. Show me. Help me. I'm exhausted. And he desires to do that for us. He desires that. So even in your spirit, if you ever felt heavy or burdened down with things that you see, in your ministries, you might see these things where the laborers are not there. And it's a lot of chaos and it's toiling in your life. It's in your uh, dreams. You see these things. Lord, this is becoming a lot. I need some rest. He's willing to give it to us. And I love him for being that humble and that gentle and that strategic to give us the tools to go. We just go to him and say, Daddy, this is how I feel. Daddy, this is where I'm at. And he's able to do that for us. God has called all who are, oh, I said that already, I'm already to begin though. God has called all who are exhausted and burdened to come to him. He offers rest from both spiritual and physical burdens. When we submit our lives to God's direction, he is our rest. He is our peace. And he will give us the physical rest we require. Christian believers learn how to exchange their heavy burdens for his easy and light yoke and burden. Yeah. This actually allows us to serve him more fully and not less. Yeah. And so as we think about that, that's who he is to us. He says that he is our rest. God himself, our father, is our rest. He is our peace. He's our peace. I worked at a place overnight. And I didn't like it at all. I was so tired. I was so exhausted. So where even I'm working overnight 5, um, 5 p.m. to 5 a.m. I'm getting up at 5 a.m. I have to get to market to school. This is by choice. So I drove him to school every day. Picked him up every day by my choice because I wanted him to attend a certain school. So I'm getting off work. I cannot go to bed because if I go to bed, he's not going to make it to school. So I stayed up <coughs> to get him to school. Get him to school, come back home. By the time I get home, it is 8.39. And now I go to rest. So I sleep super heavy. I'm asleep. But I need to be up by 2 to go back to pick him up from school, to get him home to get him dinner, to get him fed, to get back to work by five. And I did it for almost two years. And every day I was mentally and physically drained. And then I got an epiphany from my sister to pray to God and ask. And I said, Lord, I need you to move. I know this is my supplement of income at this moment, but my body is tired. Can you move? And he opened up a door at a wedding that I didn't even plan on attending. 
but I did. <laughs> so I attended this wedding and met my new supervisor. And I, from a friendly greeting, of greeting her, because she didn't look like us, it was a, a, a black wedding, and she was not, so I greeted her, and her and her husband, and she said, are you looking for a job? I said, yeah, I am. And she said, well, we have this opening and you should apply. I ran home to apply for that job. And that's where I work now. But it's just amazing. And she said, I think you will be the perfect fit. I love your heart. I love your personality. And I only said hi to her and her husband. And that was it. But it just shows that I wasn't asking him at first. I was just complaining about the entire thing and exhausted. Because that's where I was. And I needed the income, but my body was wearing out. And I didn't want to neglect my home. And I also needed the finances. And so I'm running on fumes at this time. And so as I'm doing that, he's like, I can help you. And my sister came to remind me, have you asked God? Have you prayed about it? Thank you, Lord. And I had not. I had not asked him for that guidance in that direction. I didn't know how it was going to come. I started praying. And I didn't know. And God works in the way that he wants. And so I want you to know that for our nurturing of the seed, examine your life, examine your calendar, examine your schedule, and see areas where you can create spaces for rest for yourself. And then as you're looking at that, how can you create spaces of rest for your dependents, for your spouse? How can you create those areas of opportunity for rest even within your ministry? There's times we need to go, and we gotta go, 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 go. He gave him six days, he did it. He created in six days and he rested. He gave the Israelites six years and he gave them the seventh year to rest. He gave the uh, disciples time to rest. It's an instruction from God to rest our bodies. And if we're choosing not to, we're choosing to be disobedient to him. And we're not showing up effectively for one another. And for me, that's a conviction in my heart to not show up effectively for you all. And so as we move forward and as we look at how he wants us to care for these bodies and what he desires for us to do on the inside, then we need to do those things, okay? So I'm in my three minute warning. And so as we close, one thing I want us to do is read fruit for the seed. That's what we're gonna pick up at uh, next week, fruit, fruit from the seed. And also we're gonna go back and we're gonna talk about our words of definition for us eternally. Um, and so one thing I shared uh, the first week is when we are studying and we are learning, we have to make this thing individual. You might rest more than Sister Portia. And I, my goal and my desire is to get to where you are. You may have created a structure and a balance between ministry, work, and home. And if you have that, please come and share it with me because that's the place where I'm desiring to grow to. How do we balance these things? How do we know when it's time? The first uh, lesson that God said, he tells us when to rest. And so he might tell me to rest a different time than he tells you to rest. And when that's happening, that's when we need to make sure that we're obeying and not allowing man or the pressures of this world to get us to a place of disobedience. Right. And so next week we're gonna talk about fruit from the seed. We're also gonna talk about the four definitions of essential, important, individual, and instruction. And that's what we're gonna um, deal with on that. As we go throughout the course of this week, from today to Saturday, Look at your schedule and see areas of opportunity where you can choose to prioritize rest. Okay? Have a great day. I love you all. The four words are essential, important, individual, instruction and it's what these words mean to you individually not from webster not from Miriam, not from google but if someone said sister harrison
how would you describe or how would you define important? I want you to use your verbiage, your words, on how you would define that or describe that. Okay? All right, and we'll be back next Sunday for another Christian Education Hour.